This next set of blend modes that we're going to take a look at spans between difference, exclusion, subtract, and divide. And I like to think of these as kind of special case blend modes that I really don't find myself often using. And it's really more about the numbers and what's going on under the hood with each channel of color. Starting off with difference. What difference is going to do is subtract the value of each channel of the blend color from the base color and return the absolute value. Now that sounds really technical, and I mean it is kind of technical, but if I was to choose a color of something like, well it doesn't matter really, uh, purple where I have 190, 14 and 228 is my colors, it's going to subtract those numbers from whatever color I come across on my image. And in this case, I've opened up the Jellyfish JPEG that comes along with Windows 7. So as I paint across, we're getting these really kind of out of this world results. Any time that the result of the, uh, of the subtraction dips down below zero, we're still getting a positive number again, because we're using absolute value here. So if I undo that, the nature of this does mean, though, if I'm using white, I am making a perfect inversion. So white is going to literally invert your colors. So if you see what that looks like, just kind of take a mental note where the jellyfish is kind of blue and the, the water around him is kind of pale yellow. If I undo that, jump down to the background layer and hit Control i for invert, it's doing the exact same thing. So just something to keep in mind. Now, when you're using the difference channel, black is going to do nothing, because remember that the whole operation is based around subtraction. So your original color, minus zero, is still going to give you your original color. Okay, moving down from difference, we have exclusion. Exclusion is similar to difference, it just has lo a lower contrast result. So if you were to grab some of the more mid-range tones, you're going to end up with a much softer result. And we can actually demonstrate that. So if I grab something right in here, I have kind of a pale purple, and we switch over to difference. Much more contrasty result in between the two. However, the color white is still going to invert. So really, the big difference between exclusion and difference is that exclusion is going to be softer in those mid-range tones, but they're both essentially doing the exact same thing. Okay, now, subtract is a little different. I'm going to clear out this entire layer real quick. I did that by hitting Control a and tapping the Delete key, and that just wiped out all those pixels. All subtract is going to do is make a straight-up subtraction. The colors of the blend color are being subtracted from the colors of the base color. So if I grab something like a, a mid-range gray, in essence we're just darkening because we're removing those values from all of our colors. However, if I start grabbing some more outlandish colors, then we'll start tinting into the opposite range of whatever that color happens to be. So here we're kind of pushing out toward red. Finally, we have divide. Now what divide's going to do is take the base color and, div and channel by channel, so R, G, and B, the, each of the numbers of each color found within the base color are going to be divided by the channels or the values of the channels of the blend color. So again, like if we have, I'm just assuming, somewhere out here in the blue water we have something like, uh, you know, 20, 20, 2, 20. You know, so it's mostly blue. If I was to drag with a blue, we're dividing that again, by the color blue, which would be very similar, and we're starting to get a much brighter result. So it really is just taking these channel numbers and dividing them by each other and using the color from the result. That's all there is to it. So again, these are very special case blend modes. I don't often find myself really needing them very often. Uh, most of the time, if I need to invert something, I'll just invert it outright, but they are kind of fun to play with, and they can lead to some very interesting special effects. Now, I was going to separate this out into a separate video, but let's go ahead and take a second, since we're really only four minutes in, and let's wrap this up and talk about our last four blend modes, being hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. Now these are extremely straightforward, in fact they're probably the easiest of the blend modes to understand, because all they're going to do is replace a specific channel of information for the base color. For instance, if we start off with hue, so I'm going to set my layer to hue mode, what this does, if we take a look inside of our color picker, we have HSB, which is hue, saturation, and brightness. The saturation and brightness channels of the base color will be left alone. The hue will be replaced by whatever hue you choose in your uh, blend color. So if I set this to red, and it doesn't really matter, the saturation and brightness are completely irrelevant. The only number that's going to be red is the hue, and I start painting. 
we essentially end up with red water in this case. And as I move over here, we're replacing all of the hues of this entire image with just red. So again, it's just a replacement, and that's what the hue is for. All right, next we have saturation. This does the same thing, just replacing the saturation value. So we'll switch this over to saturation. Now, all we're paying attention to is the S value here for saturation. If this is at 100%, what do you think is going to happen when I paint? If you guess nothing at all, you're pretty much exactly right. The only catch is anywhere that the saturation isn't already at 100%, that saturation is going to be kicked up quite a bit. So you have to watch out for that. Now, if we pull our saturation down, so, and that's by pulling our color picker, you know, to the left and to the right. So if I pull this about halfway down and I start to paint, and it doesn't really matter what color, we are starting to darken. Basically, we're starting to push toward gray because we're removing a lot of that saturation. All right, finally, oh, I'm sorry, not finally, we have color. And what color is going to do is make a result using the luminance of the base color or the brightness of the base color and the hue and saturation of the blend color. So it's going to, let me open up my color picker just to kind of to demonstrate. We're going to be using the hue and the saturation, so the H and the S of the blend color, and we're going to use the luminance of the, of the base color. So if I start to paint right now, actually let's use something other than blue, something that'll be a little more standout. And there's our result. Color is very handy if you are trying to uh, apply color to a grayscale image. Uh, for instance, if I come down here to my background layer, and I'm going to do something a little fancy if you want to follow along, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Now I can do that using this little half black, half white circular icon located at the bottom of the layers menu. If I click on this, I can drop down a black and white filter or black and white layer, and that's going to make everything black and white. Now if I come up here, and let's just grab a nice bright shade of red. As I start to paint, it gives us a very nice coloration of that black and white image. That's one of my favorite things to do with the color blend mode. So we'll go ahead and undo that, and I'll throw away this adjustment layer. I just wanted to show that off. Now finally, we have luminosity, and this is just kind of taking that brightness value and nothing else. So in your color picker, all you're really paying attention to is this. So if I grab a color that is very, very close to black, actually let's do something just kind of a darker shade of gray, so around 30% gray. You can see that we are taking only that brightness value. Now if we switch over to white, Boom, we're pushing it all the way up. If I switch this over to black, however, we go all the way down to black. Now, all I was showing there were uh, just black and white colors, and that may not get the point across to the degree that I want it to. So just to show you this, if I use, let me just, uh, here's how, I just want to make sure I get this just right and it makes perfect sense for everybody. Let's use a 50% tone that is fully saturated. So it's like 50% gray but with full saturation toward red and take a look at the resulting color we get. Now if I switch this over to 50% gray with no saturation, so it really is just a true gray, there's what we're getting. So what that's doing is that's replacing the luminance of the base color with the luminance of the blend color. All right, so that is a rundown of our remaining blend modes. The last two that I, I need to mention are native only to the brush. You'll notice that if we take a look here in our layer blend modes, we go through from normal all the way down to luminosity. But if we take a look inside of our brushes blend mode, we actually have behind and clear as well, which don't appear over inside the layer menu. And I, I want to show you what those do. I'm going to take my background and let's just cover it over with uh, something white real quick, just to, just to make things a little easier to see. So I'm going to drop down a solid color layer. That's by clicking on the adjustment layers button here and just choosing solid color. And I'll set my color picker over to white. Now I'm going to set layer one over to normal. And you'll see why here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and paint down anything. It doesn't matter what. I'm just going to pick on a shade of red and paint that down like so. Now, 
remember this, uh, keep this in mind, I am not changing blend modes on the layer anymore. I'm specifically changing them on the brush. And you'll immediately see, as soon as I get to painting with this, why this exists on the brush and not the layer. What behind is going to do, technically, is it's going to leave alone any pixels that are not transparent. So, if I pick another color, say a blue, and I start painting, everything looks fine here. Watch what happens when I get close to the red spot. We paint behind the red spot and come out the other side. So you see how that works. It's kind of like painting on the back side of your layer. If you think of your layer like a sheet of transparency film, this is like painting on the back side of it. Next we have clear, and this is kind of like painting with an eraser. And that's the clear, that's the easiest way I can explain it, because all you're really doing here is just making pixels transparent. If I hide my little white background layer, it's really the equivalent of erasing. And that's all there is to it. So with that, we have gone all the way through the remaining blend modes for uh, for Photoshop, that goes from difference to exclusion, subtract, divide, hue, saturation, color, and luminosity, and then finally to the two that are exclusive to brushes, which is behind and clear. And obviously you can see why those are native only to brushes, because uh, just the ability to paint on the back of a layer would mean nothing to a layer itself, and then the ability to erase, well that's basically just like turning a layer off, so you wouldn't really need that on the layer itself. However, that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.